YouTube. What's happening? It's your boy Penny LS1 checking in once again. I've been getting a lot of questions about this thing right here, Monte Carlo. So and the LS swap. So I figured I'd make a video discussing how much does it cost to do a LS swap. Now, just keep in mind every vehicle is going to be a little bit different, and then also the type and brand of parts that you choose to use will also make a difference but this will give you a baseline well not really a baseline because I, I use some of the probably some of the most expensive parts but this will give you an idea of what's needed and then you know you can compare parts and prices to different brands so I first wanted to start out now I do have a spreadsheet here so I'm on my iPad I get I got a spreadsheet for every part that I've bought and including the car itself. So I'm gonna start with the car. So that everybody know this is a 1986 Monte Carlo SS. It is a coupe, it's not a T-top. It is a true SS. When I bought it, it was bone stock. It did have some uh, headers on it on the 305 as well as a Edelbrock. I think it had Edelbrock headers, Edelbrock valve covers and a Holly no matter, I think it had an Edelbrock double pump car, but I don't know, my uncle knows all about that stuff. But yeah, I let, I gave that motor to my uncle when they snatched it out of here and they put it in one of my granddad's trucks. So, so yeah, so I bought the vehicle. I found it online. There's this website called classiccars.com. I paid $3,500 for the car. Now, because I bought it online, it was located in Richmond, Virginia. So what I did through this particular website, they had an option to do a pre-purchase inspection. So that cost was $347 to have someone go out, look at the car, took, man, he must've sent me a hundred pictures. He test drove it. Cause all I wanted to make sure was that it was, everything was functioning that way I can move the car. You know what I mean? I didn't want it to be something I had to push around. So everything checked out. I went ahead and make, made the deal. So then I had to find a way to get it back to, or get it to Texas. Cause like I say, it was in Virginia. So I found a transport company. So that cost was $725 to have the car transported from Virginia to Texas, to uh, Arlington, Texas. And so, I mean, like I say, that's not part of the swap, but I just want to throw that out there. I was able to find this car for 3,500 bucks, but I did have to spend 347 for the inspection to make sure it was something I wanted to purchase and then another 725 to get it uh, transported. So once you have the vehicle, then you have to decide what motor you want and then what system you're gonna use to do the swap. So in my case, I chose, I wanted a true LS1 or LS6. I tried to find an LS6, but they were, man, they were pricey. So I ended up with a LS1 5.7 liter. I got this engine out of a 2002 Camaro Super Sport. The uh, vehicle was hit in the quarter panel driver's side and it was totaled by the insurance company. So the guy that I bought it from, he sold me the motor, the transmission, the harness, all the accessories, the intake. I mean, the full, it was basically a full pullout. I paid 3,700 bucks, $3,700 shipped. So that's basically $3,700 with the, the freight delivered to me. I don't remember where it came from. I can't, I can't remember. I do know I bought it. I found the guy on eBay and we made the deal and I used PayPal, of course, for the transaction. So $3,700, I got my 5.7 LS1, which is an aluminum block, as you know, and I got my 4060E. So then I had to decide how I wanted or how I was going to go about getting the, the components I needed to put it in, meaning the engine mounts, cross member, headers. To my knowledge, those are the first three things you need to get the motor and transmission to sit in your swap car. So I chose Holly. So this is where the money started to be spent because as you know, the Holly stuff is not, is not cheap. So I got the hooker, the engine mount brackets. And as I'm talking, I'll, I'll put the part numbers up on the screen and I'll try to give you guys a total at the end of everything that I mentioned, I'll give you a, a total of what everything costs. 
So the engine mount brackets were $127.95. I ordered those directly from Holly. So then I went with the hooker transmission cross member. I got that directly from Holly as well. That was $249.95. And then I chose, oh, I had to get a uh, the transmission cross member extension bracket. That was another 82 bucks, so $81.98 for that. So I also went with the Holly oil pan. So it's the GM LS retrofit pan with the additional clearance in the front for the for the steering. That oil pan was three hundred fifty eight dollars and ninety five cent. I mean, that's these prices that I'm quoting y'all. That's not even including shipping and tax. That's just the list price at the time. Some of this stuff has actually already gone up. So we got the engine brackets, transmission cross member with the extension bracket and the oil pan that's four items so that's what you need to put it in the car well three items and then the headers are next so i chose to go with the headers as well from hooker or hooker slash holly so i got i don't know the size i didn't put it on here but i do have the part number i forgot the size of the um what did you call those damn things but it's the hooker ls swap full link header i chose the painted black ones which actually i made a mistake on that i should have got the powder coated ones i thought because they were cheaper but i didn't realize the painted ones is just they're just painted for um for storage and for shipping so they don't corrode or rust <laughs> as soon as you put some heat to them that paint burnt off but anyway those headers were 527 dollars and 95 cents i should have just paid the extra 100 bucks i think or 200 bucks and got the powder coated or the the ceramic ones so once you get those items you can actually set the motor in the car or the uh the engine in the car and you should be good so what i ended up doing was i went and just bought this the kit individually and i just got the driver's side set up because at the time i wasn't concerned about the air conditioning so i got the same brackets from holly but i went and got the power steering and alternative bracket the corvette style one for the driver's side and I got the pulleys, the tensioner and everything. And uh, that worked fine. So that bracket setup, let me see if I could find it on here. Okay, so I found it. So I was right, the 5428 is the spacer. Now what the spacer does, depending on what motor you have, it's the, the crank pulley, it's the alignment for that. So, you know, the truck won't stick out further. The Camaro is like the mid alignment and then the Corvette is the standard. So my, the one I needed was 5428 because I went with the standard. So that's just a spacer. The actual bracket itself was 168.95. The all the Holly alternator and power steering bracket. Um, then I had to get the power steering pump, so I got the GM Type 2 power steering pump. That was 278 dollars 95 cent. The Holly the power steering pulley was 55.63. The belt tensioner was 108.95. The idler pulley was 38.82. Y'all adding this up? Okay. Now, mind you, you can get it all in the kit, and it'll be a, it's gonna save you a couple bucks if you get it in the kit. But like I say, the kit was on back order. So that's what I did. I bought everything individual, and it ended up adding up to way more than what the kit cost. But like I said, I just went with the driver's side. Um, but I do now have the 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 passenger side bracket but i don't have the um compressor yet for the ac so so that's for that's the accessory drive so then i had to decide on what harness i was going to run i knew i wasn't going to run the holly holly um terminator deal just because the price and i wanted to keep a obd2 plug and i didn't want to have to worry about having to use a laptop just to scan you know trouble codes and stuff like that so I went with the PSI harness and PCM. I didn't need to do that, to be honest with you, because as far as the PCM, because like I said, the engine came with the original computer. But I bought a brand new computer and harness from, from uh, PSI. That ran me $629 for the harness and the computer. Then, of course, you got to figure out your fuel. <laughs> you, can, you can modify the original tank. What do you want? I'm working. I'm trying to work, make a video. Hold on. Okay, my bad. Goodness, boy. <clears throat> back to the back to the video. Where was I at? Um, fuel. The fuel tank, so the EFI fuel tank that I bought, which is Tanks Inc., but I bought it through PSI, $510. Dollars. 
that didn't include the fuel line kit. The fuel line kit, I paid an extra $200 for the fuel line kit, which I said, once again, it came with the lines, enough line to run from the back to the front, came with the regulator, the, you know, the fuel pressure regulator, filter, whatever, as well as the, all the fittings. 200 bucks for that, can you believe that? And then, let's see. Oh, while I, while I was at it, I went ahead and bought a, a tune-up kit, which consisted of spark plugs and MSD wires. That was $209.05. So then I bought all new gaskets. But the next thing on here is radiator. What radiator are you gonna run? Now, I will tell when it came to the radiator, as you all know, on the LS water pumps, the inlet and the outlet are on the same side. I wanted my radiator to be the same way. I didn't want to have that hose going this way across and then the other one going to the bottom on this side when I wanted my air intake to go that way. So I chose to go with an LS swap radiator. And my radiator of choice just happened to cost $831.39 goddamn cent. But it did come with the fans. <laughs> it came with the dual electric fans. Stop texting me. Okay. 839, 831.39. So this is a Griffin radiator with dual fans. I ordered that through Summit. That's when I realized Summit was here in Arlington, so it was actually cheaper for me to order it and not have to have it shipped. So, yeah. So, man, eight thirty one thirty nine, and then I got the uh, the stainless steel. Well, not stainless steel. I bought the Griffin Overflow Overflow uh, tank as well. I don't even see it on here, but I, I remember buying that because I mounted it inside of the uh, where the headlights is mounted on the side of the uh, the header panel or whatever or the radiator support. I bought a locker throttle cable. I chose black. That one was 7120 because I am running the uh, drive-by cable. Um, so while we're talking about that, initially I had bought, and I skipped that because I'm not running it right now, but I had bought the Holly. It was a 92 millimeter. Here it is. Holly 92 millimeter throttle body. So the Sniper EFI throttle body that I had initially bought was 169.95 so not too bad uh it was 92 millimeter but i could not get rid of that that infamous whistle and i remember uh <laughs> mr getter there said that's that cheap chinese throttle body <laughs> and i was like man that's the holly he was like they all the same so it has the the, the hole is like so small for the throttle um the idle hole the idle air hole whatever so the air when it's sucking being sucked through there with the plate you can have the plate cracked or not it's just not it's not big enough and it whistles like hell i took that thing off it's sitting over there somewhere on the shelf but i i went to the local yard here and pulled a uh well i didn't pull it but i picked up a a stock throttle body cable throttle a uh, cable throttle body off of a i think he said it came off of a 2002 tahoe so it worked perfect as soon as i as soon as i hooked that sucker up fire right up idled perfect but that one that I had initially was 169, 168.95. So if you want to go that route, just keep that in mind. And I paid fifty dollars for this used one at the at the salvage yard, the local yard. All right. So where are we at now? Oil pan gasket. That's fifty eight twenty four. I think I said that already. Okay. Low car cable said that. Okay. Water pump gasket. I replaced that. So that was eighteen twenty five. Uh, I did go with ARP cylinder head bolts. So I bought the kit from ARP. Well, I got it from Summit, but it's ARP 242.93 for the ARP cylinder head bolts. That's that's a hefty price, but they're reusable, so you might as well. You might as well get that because you know if I ever do anything, have to take those heads off, or if I swap heads, I don't have to buy no. I don't have to buy new bolts. All right. So then I'm skipping over some stuff that I hadn't that I haven't installed yet, which is not part of the actual swap. Okay, so labor. All right, I'll, I'll go over that because that's that's a big one. The labor, and when I say labor, this labor included every all the parts that I mentioned already, That all that was included in this price I'm about to tell you for labor. So they literally put the engine in, they snatched the old one out, put the new one in, put all the new parts on it that I bought, put the new fuel tank in there, ran the fuel lines, hooked up the harness, ran the relays for the fuel pump, everything. 
it, 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 you know, you could turn it on, drive it, transmission, everything was hooked up. $2,500 is what I paid. Now, I know that's probably, that's probably cheap compared to what, you know, what the prices are now, you know, and rightfully so. I'm not, I'm not, actually, I'm not knocking nobody because you got, you got to get your money. You got to get your money, but because it's getting, it's becoming more popular. So it's, the demand is there so you can charge more. So, but I did drop $2,500 to have my swap done. And then everything you guys have seen me do after that, that's just me being, you know, OCD and wanting everything to look pretty a certain way. So that's pretty much what it costs to do the swap. Now, what y'all have seen, I've done the whole suspension. That's not even included. So I'm going to give you a price right now. So this total right here, that'll get you up and running. It could, you know, give or take a couple hundred dollars or even a couple thousand because if you choose a different engine, for one, that's gonna save you some money. Like I say, this is a LS1 5.7. It's not a 5.3, it's not a 4.8. Nothing wrong with that, because y'all know I got one sitting right here. I got a 5.3 right here, so, and it's an iron block, where mine is aluminum. So, if you go with a different uh, option on your engine, um, you will save some money. If you go with different brands on your on your accessory, like it's in your cross member, your headers, you'll save money. If you, just, if you do your own uh, fuel tank, you know, by using the stock tank, putting the baffle in, I think I heard somebody even say they, they use one out of a Roadmaster. Or so. I can't remember, but a lot of those GM tanks are interchangeable. You just have to figure out a way to get it to work. So so that's it, man. I'm going to close this video out. Let me, uh, let me I'm going to cover one more thing real quick. Hold on, y'all. Let me be right back. So I want to give a shout out to my little bro, my brother from another, as we like to say in the community. So my brother, Quentin. He drew this shirt, this uh, anime. He's an anime artist. He code with it too. He uses a, I think it's an iPad. It might be a Surface Pro, but whatever it is, it's a tablet. And he's got the pencil and he be drawing sketches. And so he hit me up and he, he asked me what size I wear. And I was like, you know, 1X. He sent this shirt to me. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a link to his, uh, to his Instagram. But his name is Quentin. And I'm going to screenshot this uh what I'm looking at right now. So if y'all look at some of these pictures, these are some of the some of his drawings right here. So if y'all in the anime, man, check him out. You know what I'm saying? I like I really like this one right here. I should have told him to send me this one. Matter of fact, I might I might get that one from him. Like say so he sent me this one on GP. I'm a I'm a I'm gonna go ahead and support him and I'm gonna buy because I I like this one right here. Like that's dope. So so yeah, this is some of the work that he does. All these are hand drawn and he does uh art shows and everything. He's in the Dallas area. So, yeah, that's my little bro, man, Quentin. He's got a business page, Superior Creations, Superior underscore. Is that my saying that right? Superior, Superior, I probably, my bad, bro. Superior underscore Creations, Creations with a K. I'll put that up on the screen so you can see it. But this is his business page with everything. Um, and matter of fact, this is the one that he sent me right here. So, yeah, that's dope. So yeah, man, I just want to shout him out, man. I've been I've been watching him do his thing. Proud of you, bro. Keep doing it. You know, everybody's watching, even though people might not be saying nothing. Cause I I, I damn sure be watching you. I just don't be saying nothing to a lot of people. So, but appreciate you, man, for sending me the shirt, man. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna rock this thing for real. But alright, y'all, that's gonna do it for this video. So if y'all got any questions, man, let me know. Holla at your boy. Um, what I'm in the process of doing now is getting the ride height dialed in before I take it and uh, get the alignment done. Cause once that line is done and my ride height's dialed in, wheels and tires, baby. Wheels and tires. I know I might be doing it backwards cause I don't have the wheels to get the ride height dialed in, but I just want the stands right before I take it and get the alignment because I'm gonna be driving it at that point before I even, before the wheels come. As y'all know, all these wheel companies, they're pretty much, what, what someone told me, five to six months out on, on getting some wheels, some custom wheels made. So, so that's where we at right now, man. But I just wanted to let y'all, give y'all a little sneak peek into the, to the uh the world of pretty ls what it is his crazy ass monte carlo ls swapped g body so stay tuned for more thank you all for rocking with your boy if you haven't already please hit that subscribe button hit the notification bell check me out also on instagram at penny ls1 i do have another page irish marcel i'm gonna start posting some of my creative like b-roll edited videos on there and probably won't be too much like talking on that channel because that's really just supposed to be my production page but it's irish marcel um on instagram and then also i have irish marcel on youtube but i will start posting on there but thank you again for rocking with your boy until next time peace
Penny Ellis One, holla at your boy. <laughs>